A Starbucks store. Yes, I turned it into a cake. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Panson. Welcome to Quali Pops. Let's get started. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comments what store you'd like me to create next. This month, I'm going to be highlighting organizations that are helping fight COVID-19 and helping people who are really affected by this virus. So if you can donate your time or your money, then please do. Now, after I created my Eiffel Tower cake, I was thinking about what iconic place I wanted to create next. A lot of you gave me really good landmarks. The Sydney Opera House the Great Wall of China, the Empire State Building, all very lovely places. And yet, while I was in quarantine, the only thing I could think about was Starbucks. <laughs> my next iconic place is a Starbucks. I designed my own, so let's get started. Now to create this cake, I'm starting with a 15 by 10 inch cake and I cut it in half. You're gonna need one and a half of these. I decided to make three and I was gonna use the other ones for another cake. That didn't turn out, you'll see why in the end. So I cut my cakes in half. I'm gonna need three of these cakes, which are very thick to create my Starbucks store. I loved creating this cake because there's very minimal carving. You're basically just trying to create very straight edges. And the way I decided to do this was stack my cakes with buttercream in the middle and then give it this like really dirty crumb coat. <laughs> I froze my cake. That way it would be easier to carve out very straight edges on the sides. Once it was frozen, I did just that. I just used this very large serrated knife, cut away straight edges, and then gave it another crumb coat. This is in a Starbucks that's in a plaza with other businesses around it. This is a standalone store. Now I'm curious, what store would you like me to create next? Because I was thinking Target, and then I thought Walmart because I've been going there for groceries, or Toys R Us because I know that they're creating them again in the US. So you have three options, Target, Walmart, Toys R Us. Let me know in the comments which one you want to see next. Yeah, I gave a second coat of buttercream. This isn't a complete second coat, it's just a fix-it coat so that I can ensure that all sides of this cake are straight. Then it was time to start rolling fondant. Usually I don't show myself rolling fondant, but it was necessary here because this cake is basically paneling different fondant, different colors of fondant. So we got black, We've got this light beige that I'm going to color to make it look like wood paneling. And I'm using this almost army, like in between an army and a jade green to create the windows. So for my Starbucks, I'm going with black on the sides and on the front. When I was researching Starbuckses across the country, across the world, a lot of the classier ones had black paneling and I was like, I don't like that. I want my Starbucks to be classy. We're gonna add some black paneling. So I'm using a ruler, my fondant knife, and I'm just adding some panels to my fondant to make it look kind of like wood floor, <laughs> black wood floor that's gonna be on the side of a building. Now for the roof and the back of the Starbucks store, I didn't really pay much attention to this. And I'm covering both with one single piece of gray fondant. Just smoothing out the top and the sides and cutting away the excess. I'm doing this with a frozen cake, so that way it'll really hold its shape. After that, I started to panel my black fondant on the right and the left side of my cake. It goes up probably like an inch higher than the gray. That's kind of how buildings are, right? The roof is never really level with the side. There's kind of this lip and then it slopes so that when it rains, it catches all the water and then it just like seeps into one drain in the corner. Right? Isn't that right? I think that's right. So I got it on the right and the left and then I paneled it on the front as well. I'm doing this in two separate panels because I wanted to make sure that the edges were clean since the middle of this cake is going to be covered up. So that's where I put the big seam. That way I can ensure that there's really nice edges on this. After that, it was time to create my windows. This actually becomes a real thing. I'm gonna have some tinted windows because it's gonna be in California. California's really, there's a lot of sunlight and I wanna make sure that if you're reading, you can read. 
No, no glare, nothing. You'll be fine. Just the right amount of light, you know? So to create my tinted windows, I'm going for a forest green. Forest army jade green. I got new colors. Let's look. All right, I'm liking it. It's a kale green. So I have kale green fondant. And with my fondant knife, I'm just adding detail to make it look like different size windows as opposed to just one giant piece of kale green fondant. I tried separating these panels with like very long thin strips of fondant, but it didn't look real enough to me. So that's why I'm just gonna cut into it. But I am gonna use very thin pieces of fondant to create my doors. Then it was time to start painting my windows. I'm not really painting too much, I'm just adding a little bit of white food coloring mixed with some magic sauce and then diluting it with a larger paintbrush to make it look like window streaks. This Starbucks will cost a lot of money and to save money, we're not using Windex which is why there's a lot of streaks on my windows. That's fine, I'm okay with that. Everything else looks fancy. I'm using black fondant to create the front of my store and I'm gonna layer like three pieces of fondant. I wanted more wood paneling, but I wanted this to be a lot more modern and to be a lot more organic. So with my brown fondant, I'm creating these really wavy sort of panels for the front of my store. I'm making it the same shape as my black piece of fondant and then just applying each of my strips just a little bit apart. And I'm just adding this very, very tiny gap I really wanted the black to show through each of these brown panels. I applied my door and my windows very gently, very carefully, because it was still wet from my magic sauce. And then I applied the front of my store. Look at that. I made it higher than the side so that it looked more grand. Then it was time to start painting. So I'm using beige and brown food coloring mixed with a lot of magic sauce to dilute it and just trying to make these panels look like wood. And also notice that the scale of this building is huge because the doors are this tiny so this is like a three-story Starbucks. I kind of imagine that maybe this was like a mini library so that you can get your Starbucks, you can sit down on one of the three levels and you get to pick a book or a magazine from wherever and you get to just sit there and read. I added my Starbucks logo that I created from Baker's Bodega. Shout out to Baker's Bodega in Pico Rivera. They make edible prints so you can actually eat this Starbucks logo. Now for the side of my building, I actually cut out each of the letters of the Starbucks sign and then place them on with a little bit of magic sauce behind it. And then for the back, I really didn't care about the back. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to show anyone the back of this. So I wasn't going to do anything and then I was like, oh, what if I put a back door? So I made a tiny back door to go on the sides and then I realized like they're going to need a docking bay because how are they going to get their inventory into the store? So I added a little docking bay, not even a perfect square. <laughs> and then I gave them a trash can. <laughs> you know, every, every store needs a trash can so it's behind there. Now I wanted to add a little bit more detail on the side of this cake. I was going to add another edible print to the side but I thought it'd be cool if I did a little bit of like graffiti work or what I want to look like graffiti work. At my Starbucks, I hired somebody to spray paint the Starbucks logo on the side of the building because it would look pretty cool. So I got a picture from Google of the logo. I cut out the mermaid with an X-Acto knife and I just stuck it onto the side of my cake. So it's at the right corner. Now this cake was frozen so the fondant got sticky and so I didn't actually have to add anything to the back of this. My printer paper just stuck to the side. And once it was stuck, I took a clean sponge, soaked it in a little bit of white food coloring and some magic sauce, and just started to add it to the side of my cake. Then, when you peel it off, voila, it looks like graffiti. Oh, how satisfying is that, man? That looks sick! Once I finished adding some detail to create her nose and finish her crown, voila, my Starbucks cake was complete. It's crazy because this is just a box and yet 
It's so spectacular because we all miss Starbucks. Everybody misses Starbucks. You can go through the drive-thru, but there's like a million cars now. So now I'm just drinking coffee from home with some coffee mate. Eventually, we'll get back to a time where we can go to the Starbucks, we can sit down, and we can read. Or watch YouTube videos and pretend that we're reading articles. So I love this cake because of the simplicity, but I also love the amount of texture I use to create each of the panels. The side, even though it is just this very dark black, looks amazing with the Starbucks lettering and the graffiti that I created on the side. I love the wood paneling on the front. It just looks spectacular behind the Starbucks logo. And I really wish this was a Starbucks that I could visit, or I could visit this Starbucks. Yes, I created a second Starbucks cake and I didn't like it, which is why I didn't show it to you in the beginning. So this was actually the first Starbucks cake I created. As bomb as I like the top and the wood on this, I didn't like the proportions I created. I also didn't like the way I handled the windows. It looks messy. And that might be good for somebody else, but for me, uh-uh, that's not gonna work. If you wanna see the second Starbucks cake, it will be on the Mighty Mix channel. I am very proud of this. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but I learned a lot and I'm proud of that. So instead of creating another building, I decided to make another Starbucks cake and just improve on all the mistakes that I created first. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you, I'll see you very soon. Peace!